Hey there. Thanks so much for joining me today. My name is Daisy Olson. I am a developer advocate with Automatic, and it is my great pleasure to have the opportunity to spend a lot of time working with um, people that use WordPress for their lives, for their businesses, for their personal websites, um, particularly those that like to build out their websites with code. So today we are going to talk about um, creating a, a landing page. And uh, the idea will be to uh, demonstrate and showcase some of what can be done even without very much code uh, as, as we move into uh, the idea behind full site editing. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. A quick rundown of what we're going to do today. Uh, I'm, my introduction, obviously, is this. Um, uh, we're going to also introduce the idea of a, a new file that is being uh, introduced for WordPress 5.8 called theme.json. Uh, it's a very cool thing to simplify um, expanding what you have available in the block editor. And we'll take a look at just a small piece of what that looks like for the purposes of creating a landing page today. And then we'll go ahead and go right into the actual build of the landing page. And what we'll do is try to implement a few new features that are also coming along with WordPress 5.8 that'll be to make this uh, experience a little bit better. And then at, uh, towards the end, uh, we will talk about uh, some ways to use block patterns and reusable blocks to uh, make future landing pages a little easier to create. So let's go ahead and move on. All right, so let's talk about theme.json. So the theme.json file is a configuration file and it will do a lot of things, but for the purposes of, of what we're doing today, um, there are three things that we're going to do. We are going to register a color palette. We are going to set the overall widths of our site, um, a regular content width and a wide width, width, and these are used by the blocks. And then we are going to activate the template editing mode. Uh, that comes with WordPress 5.8. And there are a few different ways to activate it. One of them is just by having one of these theme.json files uh, in the root of your active theme. It automatically enables this new feature. So what does a theme.json file look like? So here we have a very simple theme.json file. It might look a little scary, but trust me, it's not as bad as it seems. And a lot of it is just a matter of taking an existing file and then modifying it to suit your needs. So in this case, we have the JSON format is a series of uh, key value pairs. So we have a key, a version, and a value of one. Um, that will let you um, define certain things. So the version is the version of theme.json. So it's one, it's the very first one. So not much to, to worry about there. And then we're gonna go into the settings and there are some other um, options available, but we're only gonna concern ourselves with just these few for right now. One is color. Um, we are going to have color settings and we're going to define a palette. It's also possible to set gradient presets and duotone presets in this area, but we're only going to add some simple colors. Uh, in this case, we're going to add black, white, blue, red, tan, light blue, and gray. And most of these colors, uh, with the exception of black, white, and gray, were provided as part of um, a design spec, basically. It's a uh, just we'll take a look at what I was provided for this very simple landing page. And um, this that's where the color palette is coming from. So we give it a human readable name. So for this example here, we have light blue. We have it, give it a computer readable name, which is still light blue, but all lowercase and a dash instead of a space. And then we put the hexadecimal uh, code in it. And so everything is is 
comma separated and surrounded with brackets. And there is a very structured format to this. Um, if you're interested in learning more about how to create this file, uh, there are some doc docs available in the developer handbook. So that would be a great place to look if you're looking for more information about this. And then the last section that we're going to add is the layout. So we're going to give our content size 800 pixels and our wide size 1000 pixels. It's just to give some parameters around how wide WordPress should make the blocks. If they're regular width, then they'll be 800 pixels wide. And if they're wide size width, then they'll be 1000 pixels wide. And of course, if they're full width, then they will be the full width of the viewport. All right, so this file is already in place on my site. So let's jump over there and start building a landing page. All right, so the landing page build with the template editor and actually a couple or at least one new theme block that uh, is being added with 5.8. This is a brand new site. Uh, there's not really a whole lot on it except some other content that I had created as I prepared for this presentation. And then on the left here is our mock-up. So this is just an image that was provided and this is the landing page that we're going to create. It may look a little small on your screen, but um, but we'll, we'll turn it from this little thumbnail size into a full page as we go along. So we have a, a, a hero image, we have a call to action block, we have um, four columns with some, some call out information, and then we have this content down below. So, and then I was also given this um, Google Doc that has the copy already ready to paste and our hexadecimal codes for the color palette. And then we have our images that, that were provided that we'll use. And I have these all ready to go so we can go ahead and get started building. So I'm going to create a new page. This is the site is using the 2021 theme. Don't let the, the mint green alarm you. We are going to make this page not have that. Um, the site will still have it, but this page will not. So I am going to start by taking the title from our Google Doc. I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste it right into the title for the page. Um, we will not be displaying this title. We're gonna do it a different way. So if we go back over to our landing page, it will help speed things along if we look at our structure here and then start to replicate the structure first. So what we have is basically four sections. We have our, our hero image, we have our call to action, we have our columns, and then we have our content. So what we're going to do is first, we're gonna create this image block. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, add an image. And this image should already be in my media library. So I'm gonna go over here, add it and select it. And I already know that I want this to be the wide width. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the wide width to this block. You can see that it does that. And now the next section down, I would like to have a group block to contain all of this content and so that I can give it a background color. So I'm gonna select a group from the options. I'm gonna set it to the wide width so that it matches the width of that image. And I'm gonna change the background color to be that dark blue and the text color to be white. All right, and now, what I wanna do is add this, add the page title in. So I'm going to add a block and I'm going to search for title. And you'll see this new block that's called post title. And when I add that in, it adds the post title in with an H2, which would be normally what you'd want for some things, but in this case, we actually want it to be an H1. We want it to be an H1, but we don't want it to be quite so large. So I'm gonna go ahead and reduce the font size down, down to, I think, extra large. I'm going to center the text. It doesn't look like it's centered, but it did actually. Uh, and you'll see that when we move over to the front end. And then I'm going to go back to my, my content that I was provided 
And this is the portion that's going to go in here. So I'm going to copy from here and I'm going to just go ahead and start a new paragraph block. So I have a place to paste and I'll paste that in. So now we have our copy. So let's just do a couple of little formatting things here. I'm going to center the text for the two paragraphs and I'm going to make that little tagline at the end smaller. And then now I'm going to actually do a transform because this apply now text should actually be a button. So right now it's a paragraph and if I click on the paragraph icon, which is the block icon, I can select from any of these blocks to transform it to. And what I want to transform it to is a button. So I'm going to select buttons and I want to align it to the justify the items to the center. So I'll do that. It doesn't look like it did anything, but as soon as I click out of there, you'll see that it's actually is done. So now this is a good opportunity to introduce the list view. And you can see here that we can see all of the blocks that are in use on this page. And it makes it very easy to uh, select a new block. This is also new in WordPress 5.8. That It's a great improvement over the list view that is available currently. So what I want to do with this button, if I go back over to my mockup again, is I, I can see that this button should be red with white text. So with the button selected, I am going to change the background color to red and the text color to white. There is not an option right now to set the border radius, so I'm going to leave that for later. And that is this section. Um, it looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and save my draft now. And let's go ahead and look at what this looks like on the front. All right, so here we have this landing page. And right now it's not quite matching up with what our expectations are for a landing page because we do have all of this extra information at the top. We've got a lot of green and we've got some space in here, but we're gonna go ahead and continue on and we'll uh, you'll see that we'll end up getting rid of that as we go. All right, so we are going to move on down the page and the next section is these columns. So what I wanna do now is add a columns block. When I add a columns block, I can go ahead and add the columns and then I can set the number of columns. So I chose one only because there isn't a four option. So if I uh, go out to the columns level, I can move this, I can change it to have more columns, but to speed things along just a little bit, what I'm going to do is start configuring it the way that it is by setting up my first column. And the reason I'm doing that is because if I have some of my information in here already, it'll just make it a little bit faster for this for the subsequent ones. So with my column selected, I want to add the, about 10 pixels of, of padding around it so that it gives a little bit of space. Um, my overall, uh, width of my, I'm going to go back to the columns now. I'm going to set the width to wide width. And I'm going to change the color to tan. And now when I go to my column, my single column, I will actually change that color to have a background of white. So now when I duplicate this column, they'll all have that, that same, um, information. So now what I'm going to do is duplicate this column three times. Two and three. So obviously we don't want to have that same image in each case. So what I'll do is I'll replace it, the ones that need to be replaced. We'll do a clock here. We'll do a, let's see, we'll do a van here. And we will replace this one and 
set it to the plant. All right, so now we have our four columns and we just need to add the content. So we can actually take this uh, content from over here. Let me just make this a little smaller so that I can see it all. I'm going to take the full benefits content and I will copy. And then I'm going to click in here and add a paragraph to um, block and then just paste this in. Paste. And there we have it. So if I just do that for the other two, other three rather, I'm going to do a copy. Oops. Paste. And copy, add a paragraph, oops, likes to jump around on me, and paste, and then we just do the last one, copy, and paste. All right, so let's go back to our mock-up again and see how we're looking. We can... Oops, all right. So it looks like we need to make these headings a little smaller. So I'm gonna bold them, but then make the font size normal. So we'll do that for all four. Now these are all still headings. We're just changing the styling on them. That. And then the the paragraph text is also a little too big. So let's try going down to extra small. And we'll repeat that across. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and save my draft. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the, the page again uh, and see how we're looking so far. Okay, so we've got our first three sections. So we just have one more to go. So this time I want a group around all of this remaining content. And so I'm going to add another group. I'll make it wide width. And then I'm going to go grab all the rest of that content. And just paste it right in. Copy this. We will add a paragraph block just so we have a place to paste. And we're going to paste. And there we have it. All right, so now with this, I think we are actually finished with this piece. So let's go ahead and get that out of there so we have a little more wiggle room here. And I want to select this outer group and I want to give it, which I've already set to the wide width, but I want to give it a background color of this light blue color. And what that'll do is give it that, that uh, width. And I also want to make the overall content width of this section to be a little narrower. So I don't really want it to be the full 800 pixels. So instead I'm gonna set this, just for this one block, I'm gonna set it to be 500 pixels. All right, so that's what that's gonna look like. 
And now we'll go ahead and save the draft again. And let's refresh this front. And there we have that. So I see a couple more things that I want to adjust. Um, mainly just the, the size of these headings is a little too big. So we're going to go down to extra large instead and let that stand. And then the other thing is that I think that the uh, text is not going to stand out real well once I do this. So I want to change the line height to be a little taller. And the, the reason I'm doing this rather than to set some padding is I'm just trying to do as much as I can without touching any CSS should anyone be curious to know the reasoning. And now I need to convert this apply now to a button like I did before. I'm going to set the uh, justification to center. And then I'm going to select my button and change the color to red background and white text. And in this case, I actually don't want this to be centered because it wasn't in the mockup. So let's go ahead and change that back to left justified. Okay. And then I want to give this a little more space in here. So I'm going to add a spacer block in between this list and the button. And I'm going to set that to be 30 pixels. And then the last thing that I'll do is I'm going to change this uh, application deadline to the extra small size. And I'm going to save my draft one more time and refresh this. And there is the majority of our landing page. So the next piece is going to be to get rid of all of this extra content and uh, get the background to be a different color. So. From my page, I'm going to go to the page settings and I'm going to go to template, which is a new feature. Um, this would not have been quite like this before. There would have been potentially an option under page attributes to choose a page template. Um, so now when you want to create a new template right from within the block editor, you can just click on new. I'm going to give this a name called landing page. And it will create that. And everything looks a little bit different now. So I wouldn't, it's not a concern it once you kind of accustomed to what to expect. But what I want to do is start to get rid of some of this information. So before I didn't have access to these header blocks. So, but I do now. So what I want to do is get rid of this group. So you can see that the box went around it. And I can select to remove block. I would like to select this separator and remove that. And then I actually want to take this group that has the post title in it out because I already have the post title down here further. So I don't need it to be part of the template itself. And I'm going to remove that block. OK, and then I scroll down and that's all there is. There's no footer included in the template editor at this time. So when I do that, I'm all good. Now this group here is the entire template. And what I want to do now is change the color, the background color of this template to be this dark gray color. And when I, when I publish this, it's going to ask me if I want to publish the page and the template. I only want to publish the landing page template. I don't want to publish the page itself. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then I'm going to click on this back button to go back to the page editor. So and here we are. And it doesn't look like I've done anything here. But when I go to the front end now and refresh this, you can see that a whole bunch of stuff has changed. So we've lost our header. We've lost our footer. All we have are our blocks and our background. So we are so much closer now. And so there are just a few things that aren't possible from the block editor that I'm going to just add a little bit of custom CSS for. And here we have um, the customizer. So I'm going to go into additional CSS here. And I have some CSS already prepared for this. Then it looks a little bit long, but there's only four rules here. Um, 
one is that this theme is adding a top and bottom margin to a lot of blocks that I don't want in this case, but I only want it to apply to this landing page template. So what I've done here is I've created a um, rule that will only target this class for this particular landing page. So um, if I've done my work right, then when I uncomment this, you can see that everything pulls together and collapses down. And then the next thing is that since there isn't a way to apply a border radius to that button right now, I can actually do that with CSS here. And so when I uncomment that, then my button becomes border radius. And then the other thing that needs to be adjusted here is the bullet points in the mock-up were uh, carrots or like uh, arrows. And that isn't an option right out of the box for CSS, but I have written a little CSS to change the list style type to be this character. So I can do that. And then it's a little too far indented. So I've just changed the padding here and then that pulls it out a little bit closer to the way it was in the mock-up. So once I publish this, I can clear out of here. And now the only thing that I might want to do from here is just to close up the spacing at the top and the bottom, but it's, uh, it's pretty minimal. And I feel like I've got a pretty good uh, landing page created based on that original mock-up. All right, so let's talk about further things that you could do. So if you had a section of a landing page that you use again and again and again, and it's always the same, and if it, anything ever needed to change with it, you would have to actually go out and edit every landing page you had. And in some cases, that could be like hundreds of pages, um, depending on your business. I have actually seen sites that do have hundreds of landing pages to, that are used for different purposes, for different promotions, for different ad um, advertising um, efforts. So it actually does happen. So if you have something like that, so for example, in the example, we had um, the a call to action section at the top. If that was always going to be the same, you could actually save it as a reusable block and then use it multiple times. And if you ever did need to edit it, you would do it from a central location. If you ever needed to edit it, you would do it from a central location. So reusable blocks is a block or multiple blocks that are saved to allow management from a central location. So changes made to a reusable block will apply to every instance of the reusable block across an entire website. So you can actually um, convert blocks from your content to be reusable blocks. It's pretty handy. There is uh, There are workshops on it at uh, learn.wordpress.org if you're interested in learning more about that. And then another option that you can use to speed up your landing page creation would be to register block patterns. A block pattern, unlike a reusable block, is more of a, a starting point for your blocks. It's more like a template where you can have uh, some of your settings already configured and, and which block should be added. And then you are free to make modifications to them from there. So for example, the four column section of our landing page could have been a block pattern that already had four columns. It had the tan background, it had the wide width, it had the um, placeholders for four images, placeholders for four headings, placeholders for four paragraphs. And then you'd be able to actually use that to um, start off that section of your landing page. It might not always be the same for each one, but maybe you always, or you frequently use that four column layout. A block pattern would be a really excellent way to do that. There will be in the near future, a block pattern directory that people have um, contributed to, to create these beautiful designs using blocks. 
that can be copied into your own site. And then at some point in the future, it may be possible to actually submit your own block patterns into that directory. So um, it's, it's a pretty great thing. And then there's also a block patterns registration workshop at the same uh, learn.wordpress.org website. Um, these workshops are free and uh, I definitely encourage you to go check them out. So thanks for joining me today and I hope uh, you will stay in touch. Uh, my contact information is up on the screen. Please feel free to reach out to me at any of these um, through any of these channels and let me know what you thought of this content and if you have any questions. So uh, I hope that the rest of the WordCamp Santa Clarita event is excellent and I hope to um, speak with some of you soon. Thanks.